Hey guys, so today, or actually tonight, it is the night before like the uh, main part of this vlog, but it seemed like you guys were kind of interested in the uh, 3D printer, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys what that's all about a little more, uh, because I need to print another one of those Milwaukee um, brackets for the batteries, so I'm going to kind of show you how that's done, and then uh, when we wake up, it'll be printed, and we'll take it into work and uh, probably mount it on the road and show you guys how, what that's all about. So let's go ahead and hop on to uh, the computer here and hop onto Thingiverse, uh, which is a free website where you can download 3D files that are already pre-made and uh, you basically just load it up into a slicer, which I'll talk about that, and uh, we'll sh uh, basically you send it off to the printer and it uh, starts doing it. So let's go ahead and hop onto Thingiverse and I'll show you what that's all about. Okay, so this is the website I'm using called Thingiverse, and uh, what we have here is the Milwaukee M18 battery storage mount. So this is what the website looks like, and uh, you can look like uh, look at depending on how the person who posted it uh, orients it. You basically have a picture of what it actually looks like, and then a picture of the uh, 3D file. Um, so what you do is you basically just go down here, right here, to uh, download all files, um, and then it is going to show up down here. You're going to open it, files, M and uh, double clip M18 clip, and that's going to open it in a, into a slicer. Uh, I use Cura, and uh, basically what Cura does is it's going to load the 3D file, and uh, I just recently got a second monitor, so this is really nice for this kind of stuff. Um, so we'll let that load here, and uh, Actually, while that loads, I'll talk about the second monitor. The reason I got a second monitor is because of the editing for the videos, these videos. Um, basically, I can have my editing screen here, then I can have the full screen image here, and it uh, enhances workflow quite a bit. Um, but anyway, so what we got here is the 3D file, so I'll go ahead and uh, zoom in here. So this is Cura, and uh, what Cura allows is for, uh, you can see I have the printer layout here, um, and then we can look at it in any direction we want, under it, over it, um, get close to it. Um, and that's basically the file that we're printing and how it's, uh, how it's oriented on the bed. So what we can do is we can move that whatever way we want, um, move it left and right, up and down. Um, anyway, so we're going to print this in uh, a normal quality. So basically we have all, there's so many settings. I forget the exact number, but I want to say it's like 1500 settings. Um, there's only a few settings that we really want to deal with. Um, we'll set it to normal, which is uh, layer heights and whatnot. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to change the infill. Um, I did the last one at 100%, but we'll do this one at like, we'll try 60% and see how that goes. Um, basically the infill is the percentage of, um, let's see if I can do an actual preview screen for you to show you what I'm talking about. Um, but basically, basically what, I, what I'm trying to say is that the infill is the percentage of um, fill that the um, part gets filled with in plastic. So if it's a 60%, it means that it's basically 40% uh, hollow, if that makes sense. 60% material, 40% hollow. If you do 100% infill, it's 100% all the way through plastic. Um, the reason you'd want to do 100% infill is the strength. So the lower infill, you get faster print times, but you uh, you reduce the strength due to the, the gaps that you get. Um, the outside of the part itself is going to be completely filled, like you see, but it's the inside that um, that gets changed when you mess with the infill. So we'll do 60. And then the other things that we just gotta worry about, which are already uh, set from my previous prints that I've kind of figured out, I do a 210 cel degrees Celsius um, printing temperature, which is the nozzle temperature, and then the um, build plate temperature, which is uh, what, the, basically this right here, the plate, um, that's gonna be at 65 degrees Celsius. Um, but basically all the other settings, I mean, there's so many settings, it's crazy how many settings there are. Um, there's so many settings that it's hard to talk about everything, but those are the basic settings. Um, and then another setting is that build plate adhesion. We're gonna do no adhesion. Um, and that just means that this part will print directly on the bed. Since I have a glass bed, uh, the parts come out really smooth if I print directly on the bed. Um, so, with that being said, what we can do is come down here and hit slice, 
it's gonna slice it and then it's saying it's gonna take five hours and ten minutes use 37 grams of filament uh, and 12.47 meters uh, long worth of filament so so we'll take this SD card here and we will insert it into this dock and we will save we'll save to removable and that's going to save it to that uh, SD card. We'll hit eject and we should be good to go once it says safe. All right, cool. So now what we do is we take this straight over to the printer and we put it in. Okay, so now that we got it inserted, we're just going to go through the menu here and uh, we're going to go to print from SD. We're gonna pick the file that we want. I have another file on there, but we're gonna make sure we wanna pick this one that says M18. Um, oops, there we go. Print, and that is going to uh, heat the bed and nozzle. I already had it preheat, preheating for this uh, print, but as you can see, it's uh, printing to 205 for this print, um, and then we have a 65 degree bed temperature. So while that's printing, I figure I'll show you what's going on here. So we have the bed right here. This is uh, referred to as the bed, uh, and that's 65 degrees Celsius. There's a glass bed on top of that, um, which reminds me, I haven't printed in a few days, so we'll just make sure that this uh, print surface is nice and dust free. I uh, don't want any contaminants on the bed. Um, but basically what happens is this bed heats up to 65 degrees Celsius, which, uh, okay, we're already moving. So I'll actually talk you through this. Okay, so the print just started. And as you can see, it's gonna start laying down a filament. Okay, so what it's doing right now, it's laying down that first layer. And the first layer is gonna be 100% because it's the bottom layer. Um, but see what's going on here is that this nozzle that you see here is melting the plastic uh, and it's laying it down in a bead. And based off of the computer software, it knows exactly how it needs to move this axis, this axis, the nozzle axis, the up and down axis. It knows how to move every axis in uh, in a way that lays down a pattern. So I don't know about you guys, but this is pretty satisfying for me to watch, just watch this printer go to work and do its thing. So what's going on up here is this is a motor and uh, basically it has a set of gears inside that just pulls this, what's called filament, the plastic, which is PLA. Um, and it's just feeding it through there, through this tube. And then it gets down here to the nozzle. All right, guys, uh, so as we can see, it's laying down the first layer, like I said. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda let this do a little time lapse and show you guys what this is all about. And then hopefully when we wake up in the morning, uh, we'll have a nice clean print. As you can see, it just finished the first layer, so it's gonna lay another layer down. And then it's gonna start the second layer. So uh, layer by layer, this is gonna build apart. Like I said, it's a, uh, let's see, five hours and 10 minute long print. Um, so by the time we wake up, should be good to go. We'll head, take it on to work and install it. So enjoy the little time lapse and then we'll see you tomorrow morning and hopefully we have a nice good print.
Alright, good morning everyone. Uh, this is the 3D printed part just off the bed. It was a 7 hour and 47 minute print time. Came out pretty nice. Smooth flat bottom. Everything looks good to me. So let's go ahead and go head on to work and uh, we'll see how uh, or when we can install this. Uh, we'll see what's going on when we get there. Alright everyone, we're here with the rotator. I actually got to go do a rotator call, so I'm actually videotaping this one too. It will be a separate video, but uh, that's what's going to take up a good 2-3 hours of the first part of the day is we're going to go do a rotator call. We got two uh, generators to lift container chassis. So we're going to go ahead and lift those up and uh, we'll get back on this camera when we get back. So we'll see you in a little bit. Alright, so here's the car we're dealing with. We uh, It was involved in an accident. As you can see, the whole uh, side of this or this tire and uh, this side was impacted so uh, we got no tire and then three good tires show the tire over here here's the tire and like axle and tire axle the whole assembly got hit pretty good so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get it on a flatbed and see what we can do there's mr. Robert doing his uh, inventory of the yard we have a computer system that tracks the inventory, but we also do a, a visual check just to confirm what the computer's telling us. All right, here comes Roberto. Looks like he's got, I'll tell you right now, that is gonna be unit four. Mark's got unit uh, seven in the back back there um, doing a service on unit seven. And the uh, California Highway Patrol is here to uh, do an inspection on uh, a vehicle that was involved in an accident. As you can see by the sign on the back of our uh, flatbed there, we are looking for drivers. We always need drivers. What's the plan, Stan? Hook up to the T slots. T slots. Should be all right. And it's got the breakaway stuff. Should be fine. Muffler's bent? Probably from the impact or whatever. The yeah. muffler? Probably. <laughs> Take a picture. There, Always document. Always document damage. Well, I'm going to take a picture just to be you know, on the safe side. If you want to hit that button, I'll hold this up. I might just drag a little bit on the. What do you want me to do? Huh? What do you want me to do? Run the Right in front of what? In front of the tires. It's oh. got T slots right on the frame. 
Oh, on the front side? Yeah, the front side, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to get to that on this side. Because of the muffler? Well, that and the uh, the block of wood. Yeah, I found it, but I don't know if it's going to have enough uh So we try to pull from one side, see if it'll pull it forward. Yeah. Try. And uh, then try to get to it then. take pictures because someone could say someone could say hey my my rims damaged you damaged my rim but then your pictures hey I didn't even touch the rim I would use chains down here vice versa so you guys probably didn't see it but Roberto uh, tightened up the winch cable and it tightened these chains and now he's gonna figure out a way to tie down the front or back I guess Next. Alright, 
So Roberto's got that all tied down and he's going to take that down the street to Coachella. Um, looks like the uniform guy just showed up so we're going to go check with him and see how the uniforms are doing and uh, make sure everyone's got their uniforms and uh, then we'll see what else the day has in store for us. Okay, oh jeez, I almost tripped. Um, Alright, so update on the rotator. We got a little Milwaukee cabinet here with a charger. Uh, we got a sawzall, a um, cutoff wheel deal. Um, here's one of the 3D printed battery holders. Um, and like I said, or like you guys saw at the beginning of this video, uh, we printed out another one. So I'm probably gonna mount that right next to it. If uh, this allows, it might not clear, I don't know. But if not, we'll probably mount it over here in this corner. But basically it's just a matter of drilling two holes, putting the bolts through, nut on the back side and uh, it's uh, fine and dandy. So let's go ahead and uh, work through that and see what we can do here. So, uh, show you guys the tools that I got here. Uh, we got a Milwaukee battery here to uh, test out the fit. And something that I found interesting, if you guys refer to my last vlog uh, where I talked about these, I had to put a little heat to them to uh, get these to fit and then, and then they fit perfect. But at, right now, check this out. Fits, I mean, fits right on there. So, um, might, let's see. yeah, see like, it's actually better than the other one. And this is straight out of the printer. I haven't done any, uh, heating to it. So, uh, pretty happy with that. What we got here, we do have four, um, four uh, holes for bolts. I'm gonna use two. Um, and then I believe these are like six thirty seconds of uh, um, screws and, uh, or bolts. And then we got a uh, nut on the backside, locking nut. Um, so, we are going to take the Milwaukee drill and uh, use this drill bit here to drill. I chose a different spot for, uh, for this mount. Uh, I'll show you guys that in a second. And uh, we're gonna drill two holes through here and uh, then we'll get it all mounted up. Uh, so, let's get started with that. Okay, change of plans. I gotta go run a call, so uh, I'll be back. It's a quick, quick call. I'm gonna go uh, get a sweet sweeper, street sweeper, and bring it back here to the yard and it's going off to uh, Riverside tomorrow morning. So, I'm gonna go get that. We'll be back, continue the project. So we're through on that one. We will line up this guy right here with that. Um, and then we'll put the bolt or the nut, excuse me, on the back side. And that will allow us a spot take this out for the time being that will allow us a spot to hold this in place all right so that's secured now we're gonna line up through here we're gonna make sure we find a good spot and Oops, starting to walk on us a little bit, so. I guess it would help to go in forward. All right. I'll put the next one on. like so. Try to get the nut on the back. All right, there it goes. All right, so let's see. I have a crescent wrench with me. Uh, looks like we'll have to use it too. All right, 
that is set. And now we just take our battery like so. All right guys, so here's the final product. This was the one that was already mounted. This is the one we just mounted. And as you can see, nice fit. Another 3D printed part. So that's working out pretty good. I'm happy with that. Put the other one there and uh, we'll close her all up and they're nice and mounted, ready to be used. So I'm gonna grab the uh, vacuum and get this all cleaned up and uh, we'll see what else the day has. The day's, it's almost, almost four o'clock, so don't have a lot of time and it just started uh, sprinkling out there. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get a vacuum and we'll see what we got. Put this in the uh, Milwaukee vacuum cleaner. That's kind of the concept of these new this new tire shine. Even though it has a little dust in there, it'll wash right off. Back to normal. Alright guys, well it started raining pretty hard and I had to kill the cameras, so now we're home and we're going to start editing the uh, vlog that you are watching right now, as well as the container lift that we just did uh, this morning. So with that being said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the video. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching guys.